This is our one piece of floss, but as you can see, there are six individual strands, three on each side. And we're going to separate them right down the middle. Go slow as your strands start to twist to avoid knotting. And there you have your two separated strands. For running stitch, we're going to come up through the back of the hoop, and I've also drawn a line here to make sure the stitch is straight. I also have a knot at the end of the thread, so it will stop at the back of the hoop. You pull your needle up and pull the thread all the way up. And you're going to go back down depending on how long you want your stitch length to be. And you come back up through the back about a stitch length away from the first stitch. And then another stitch length down. And you'll just keep repeating that until you're all the way done with your line. For the back stitch, you are going to start like running stitch and do a stitch length back through the top of the fabric. Again, come up like running stitch a stitch length away. But then we're going to come back through the same hole that we used to end our first stitch. Then we come back up a stitch length away through the back here and pull the thread through. Then we'll go back down through that same hole that we used on the second stitch. Then come back a stitch length away through the back. Same thing, back through the hole we used for the previous stitch. I am varying the length of my stitches to show a different effect. For chain stitch, you'll start through the back. And pull your floss all the way through. Then we're going to go back down as close as you can without getting into the hole you just created. Then you're going to leave a small bit of a loop. And then bring your needle back up through the back, and there is your first chain. You'll want to go back down very close to the last stitch you just made, but not in it. You'll need to come back through at the point you want it to go through the loop. and go back down right next to the stitch we just made. To end the chain stitch, bring your needle down over the loop you just made to lock it in place. For satin stitch, start through the back side of the hoop and pull all the way through. We're just going to make a line for the shape you are filling in. Pull through and you're going to come back through the bottom on the back of the work. Pull through, go back through the top. And you'll continuously go through the bottom of the shape on the back side of the hoop and come through the top of the shape on the front side. 
Here's another technique for the satin stitch that uses less floss. So we just made the stitch on top of the shape through the front of the fabric. So we're going to come up through the back, right next to the hole we just made. We'll come back up through the back at the bottom of the work. You're using a lot less floss for your project. The stitches on the front of your work look exactly the same even though you are using two different variations of the satin stitch. The difference is in the back of your work. You can see you're using a lot less floss in the second technique. Many embroiderers like to outline their shape in backstitch or another decorative stitch before or after completing the satin stitch to give it a more polished look. 